Hello everyone. Um, we're here for a second match uh, with Cruel Zoo, and we are on the play, which is exactly where we want to be. Um, and this is a keepable hand, so uh, we are going to roll with it. Um, so we've got turn one, uh, maybe Curd Ape into turn two, uh, Goblin Guide, uh, maybe Path for another creature, um, and then turn three, hopefully we hit another land, we can go like Devastating Summons into Reckless Bushwhacker for a bazillion. Uh, that'd be great. So we're definitely going to keep this. Um, best draw for our second turn is probably a Burning Tree Emissary for this Reckless Bushwhacker. Uh, a third land is going to be great, so um, we're just going to play Curd Ape and pass here. The reason we're going to play Curd Ape first is because um, it'll represent uh, getting it, lo it losing haste will represent um, a potential for like swinging four next turn. Um, so we're in Mountain Faithless Looting. This could be a bunch of things. Discarding two more mountains, that's uh, usually not what you want to be discarding. With Faithless Looting you want to be discarding something valuable, like an Arclight Phoenix or something. So I'm not sure what this is yet. This could be a bunch of things. It could be the 12 volt deck that's been going around. It could be um, some kind of Arc Light Phoenix deck. It could be Hollow One even. So not not really sure at all what this is. Again, the best draw here is probably Burning Tree Emissary. Um, we're fine with seeing a third land because that sets up our th uh, third turn of doing wacky stuff with Devastating Summons. Devastating Summons, sacrifice all our lands, uh, cast Reckless Bushwhackers, um, give our new tokens haste, and plus one plus oh. <clears throat> so Flint Hoof Boar... Flint Hoof Boar is alright. Uh, it's probably more mana efficient to go ahead and cast um, Flint Hoof Boar. Um, but I don't think I want to do that. I think I want to play this Goblin Guide, and then if they maybe play, if this is a Hollow One or something, and they play a Hollow One, we'll have uh, the ability to cast Path. So it looks like we're against probably the 12 Bolt deck, especially seeing this Lava Spike. Um, it's looking like we're going to just be playing against. Um, so if this is a two mana creature, we're going to be happy. Terminating Voice, sure. Discarding Lava Spike. And I'm not sure what is going on on their side, but um, we might just run them over before they ever get a chance to do anything. Okay, so we're just going to get a, um, a Sacred Foundry tapped here. Um, and then we're playing for the land at this point. Well, that's fine. Um, we just get to... We're just going to take it slow. Um, go ahead and swing with these with the dudes swing with the team they found a mountain off the top they're gonna um, simian spirit guide I guess into a lightning bolt on our creature and uh, that's a little dangerous for them because we could have a Tarkas command um, but we do not so we're just gonna accept that go to 14 um, and I think we're gonna go ahead and just cast this um, flint hoof for especially because uh, we know they're not playing Hollow One now, so we're not going to be pathing a Hollow One anytime soon. So still looks like we're just playing some kind of burn variant. Probably going to see some Monastery Swift Spears or um, the other guy with Prowess. Um, prowess and minus one, minus one counters. It's for some reason, his, his name escapes me. Uh, this flashback of Faithless Looting is just a really good sign for us. I don't know what's going on on their end, but they're, they seem to be really stumbling on something to find some kind of uh, action here. It's, which is funny because they have so many cards in their hand. Um, this just looks like they must have some... Um, must have a bad hand, or they, maybe they kept a bad hand. Um, oh, discarding two Arclight Phoenixes. So yeah, we're, we're playing an Arclight Phoenix deck. Um, but that was just an amazing draw, and um, they're going to be very nearly dead this turn. Let's see. So we're going to swing for 3, um, 7, 10, 12 this turn. Put them at 2. Yeah, and we're not nearly, we're not close at all to dying, so 
they're just gonna they're just looking at essentially being very dead next turn can you deal 17 damage to us this turn so let's think about how this goes wrong um, if they play a land and have four bolts in hand they do 12 damage to us and then get their arc light phoenixes back I guess that could do it um, but I don't that's very unlikely but it is possible this, it, it wouldn't be crazy for something like that to happen so here's Manamorphos so they're they're very likely gonna get their Arclight Phoenixes back so let's see what you got two more bolts Uh, even two bolts won't do it, I don't think. Let's see, so six plus five is eleven. Uh, Fourteen, wow, actually two bolts will do it. Two bolts will win the game. I can't believe it. So if they just have two lightning bolts in hand, they win. Oh, but they didn't, I guess. Very lucky for us, how lucky. Um, it looks like they were dirtling for a long time, but they had a real chance of winning that, that game right there at the end. Um, so we are definitely playing uh, some kind of Arclight Phoenix burn deck. Uh, Life Goes On is going to be fine. Uh, Thalia is going to be wonderful here. Um, Lightning Helix is... Lightning Helix is alright against Monastery Swift Spear and stuff like that. Um, Tormod's Crypt... I don't know how much I want to be playing Tormod's Crypt and diluting the deck. Uh, but it's... Let's say it's... We can probably put one or two in. Um, we got to think about what we're going to be taking out here. So we got to be careful about um, diluting the deck a little too much. Uh, where I think we're fine with taking out um, a couple of Tarkas Command. Um, we can probably take out the Flint Hoof Boars. Um, the question is, do we want um, do we want this other Tormod's Crypt, or do we want any Path to Exiles? Um, I think we're fine with the two that we have, and we don't need a third one. Um, and yeah, we're fine with. Do we? Would we rather have a Graft Digger's Cage over a Tormod's Crypt? Um, I probably so. Let's say let's say yes, um, and then we'll go ahead and shave like a Zergo. Shave our Zergo. I don't know if this is right. Again, I'm kind of um, just sideboarding here a little uh, on a whim, but it seems fine. So this is honestly as much uh, our deck's been running really well. This is going to be our first mulligan in in our fourth hand we've seen. Um, this it just is is what a uh, one lander and it can cast some stuff, but it's it's only one color. The basic force is not going to do it for us, so we're going to mulligan. And this is one of those instances where we are going to keep one lander and pray for a land. So we have a scry, we have a draw, and we have a second draw. So we should be fine to find one. Um, this will let us play Curd Ape and Goblin, or Goblin Guide and our Bolt. So, um, God, I don't like putting that at the bottom, but we are going to have to. Um, we don't, I mean, we'd have to have three lands to use it efficiently, so that's fine to put it at the bottom. Uh, so, let's see. Opponent plays no turn one play and pass. Uh, well, that's that's a good sign. And I think we're going to start with a Goblin Guide because uh, our Curd Apes are, are going to be 1-1s one unless we find a forest out of nowhere. Uh, lava Spike on top for them. That doesn't hit our creatures, so I think we're fine with that. Man, they would had no turn one play. That's That's wild. Faithless Looting, they're going to discard and find two Arclight Phoenixes, or maybe one. If they have two, I'm going to be a sad, sad boy. It's unlikely for them to have two Arclight Phoenixes, like, at the top of their deck. So they're they're probably doing this to recur an Arclight Phoenix here, in some form. So, um, we'll probably see an Arclight Phoenix, at least one, come back. If there's going to be two, uh... Man, the, the opponent just has the nuts.
looks like they're really tanking on what to discard though, so um, they're not a uh, snap discarding two arc light phoenixes, which is a good sign for us. Uh, we are almost definitely seeing one. Yes, yeah, so here's one in a mountain. Okay, so there's the spike. So this is going to recur the arc light phoenix. We're going to take five and go to ten. That's a really fast clock. Um, and we're gonna probably stumble on mana here, so um, so we might be using these these bolts defensively here. Um, I think uh, since the Archite Phoenix represents more damage, um, so we can hit the Archite Phoenix, but I'm just not sure if it's worth it. Uh, we're, we're probably just gonna we can just hold off and see what happens. We don't have to bolt right away. So it looks like I like we we had three looks to find a land and we didn't find a land. This is what I talk about when this is kind of a gambler's deck. Um, there are just going to be scenarios where you have awkward hands and um, you're just hoping that the hand pans out. Uh, this time it didn't. We're probably going to get run over here. Um, all they have to have is some some a series of direct damage and we're going to um, we're going to die because we're only already at ten. Um, even if we get another land. It'll very likely be a fetch land, and um, if we want to uh, get a forest, uh, it may cost us some life, some serious life. So here's a tormenting voice. Uh, I think this is where I respond by bolting this swift spear. So that saves us three damage, or saves us um, some damage. Opponent, I guess, discarded a mountain. Faith is looting, sure. So, worst case scenario, or worst comes to worst, we could end up bolting this. Okay, so we're gonna get a madness fiery temper. They're gonna be able to cast it. No, that's really good. They didn't play the the mountain. Wow, that's so lucky for us. Um, so <laughs> that what. Not drawing a land there is super unlucky for us. Um, we're very likely going to be bolting this Arclight Phoenix. Um, so we'll just go ahead and wait till combat. They're going to hard cast a Fiery Temper. No, they're going to Bedlam Reveler. Oh my god. And then they we know they have a Fiery Temper in hand. So we're just very, very dead here. So they Madness a Fiery Temper. So good. Oh, they're even going to Simeon Spirit Guide. Cast a Manamorphose on top of that? Sure. Oh, they have another Arclight Phoenix in, in in the graveyard. I didn't realize that. So yeah, yeah, we're just very dead there. Like, we stumbled and they had a great hand. Um, so now I'm almost thinking that the Path to Exiles are a very good choice. And probably better than the Atarkas commands. Um, honestly, though, now we're probably wanting to play our like a more consistent game rather than a reactive game so maybe we take out um, we take out uh, our Tormod's Crypt we can leave in a Graft Digger's Cage I think that's fine um, so since we're all, we are gonna be able to be on the play here I think we do like try to keep our deck kind of more consistent um, try to look for that great turn one play. I'm going to go down a two path and leave up three Atarka's commands. This is going to make it to where um, we have those very explosive hands available. Um, and this is n this is not a super explosive hand, but it is a great consistent hand that um, can be reactive with Path to Exile. So I'm totally fine with this. We're going to turn one fetch for a stomping ground and play an experiment one. And then... Um, then next turn we get to um, play a Goblin Guide uh, while in the Coddle Swing 5 as long as the opponent has no play. So, But, it, I mean, chances are that they have a 
some kind of um, interaction. This deck runs all kinds of bolts, which are very efficient and very good removal for our, for our creatures. Honestly, I do think this is probably not a very good matchup um, because of how much interaction this deck runs uh, with our creatures. Um, but uh, I think we're I think we're still in a good spot. Um, so yep, yeah, here we're just going to go ahead and cast a Goblin Guide, um, make our experiment one big. And then cast a Wild Coddle, make our experiment one even bigger, and swing five. Uh, and then next turn we have a Path to Exile uh, alongside a Bolt. So we have plenty of, like, we're going to try to ride these three creatures out. Uh, we may end up casting this Curd Ape next turn, but um, in all likeliness, like, we, we definitely want to keep up this Path to Exile for something terrible, like something terrible goes wrong. Uh, the opponent might be thinking about um, exile, exiling a Simeon Spirit Guide into casting some kind of bolt effect to kill one of our creatures, but I guess they opt against it. Uh, they found a mountain, which is unfortunate, but that's all right. We're we're in a pretty decent position. We're in no way f like absolutely slotted to win, but we have a nice little spot. opponent is pondering their plays here. Uh, another thing about this deck, uh, our zoo deck, is that um, we could, instead of having main deck Path to Exiles, have something like main deck Simeon Spirit Guides, and that would add to the just insane explosiveness of the deck. Um, but I'm one for, you know, as much as this is a gambler's deck, I'm not a gambler, so um, it, any place where I can opt for consistency, I go for it, and so um, Path to Exiles um, allow us to play a little bit better of a reactive game and, and have some kind of answers for something really big on the other side of the board, so um, the main deck two Path to Exiles are, um, I think, uh, where I prefer over the the... Att uh, attempting to go even more explosive with uh, Simeon Spirit Guides. Opponent is really tanking over their decisions this turn. They must have a lot of options. They do have seven cards in hand, so that means probably a lot of options. So we definitely can't win next turn. Uh, we have eight power on the board. Even if we draw on a Tarkus command, um, we're still just looking at uh, even if if they miraculously don't block and stuff like that, and they have no interaction, which is all very very unlikely. That's still only 14 points of damage. Puts them at one. So um, okay, so they've they've decided here. They're going with a faithless looting. Drawing two, discarding two. Uh, this could potentially be a very aggressive, like Arclight Phoenix turn, and uh, we take a lot of damage and get very defensive. Uh, no Arclight Phoenix is very lucky to see with this faithless, uh, the first faithless looting here. We've got one more faithless looting. Uh, more mountains. So it looks like the opponent just didn't really find anything that great. And so now they're keeping their Monastery Swifts here back to block. That is a wonderful sign. It is amazing. Uh, and I think I'm actually going to just go ahead and bolt it here in order to go ahead and get in more damage and say, hey, uh, you're, you're taking lethal next turn. So you're going to have to do something about uh, sweeping this board. Okay, so the opponent's Simeon Spirit Guides and then Bolts in response targeting our Experiment 1, which we will be able to regenerate. That's a surprising choice. Um, okay, so we're just going to go ahead and regenerate our Experiment 1. 
Uh, that saves them the damage off the Experiment 1, but I'm surprised they didn't choose something like Wild Nacatl. Uh, that means we get to keep that Experiment 1 on the board. Perhaps they have something like an Anger of the Gods, and that's what they're banking on. They only have three cards in hand right now. Okay, so there's the Anger. So that was the play. Um, and that's fine. We're still, we're still just fine. They've got two cards in hand, and we have um, plenty of cards to rebuild. So we're going to go ahead and rebuild here and just pass the turn. Uh, lucky for us, they don't really... Um, they aren't really in a spot to turn the corner and win, so we're just uh, we're just fine here. And again, if they play a big creature to try to block us, um, we've got Path to Exile and some inevitability here. So we've got a Lava Spike uh, into a Bedlam Reveler. Okay, well that's that's just fine because uh, we have a path for it. So we're doing just fine. They're good. They are out card advantaging us right now, but um, I think this is. This is just fine. The only pr thing that would be terrible here is like they find a second. They find a second um, uh, anger of the gods. That would be a big problem. All right. So we're basically saying, hey, we have a blocker, but also you're looking at lethal. So do something about this. Anamorphos, sure. That doesn't that doesn't kill us yet. They have no Arclight Phoenixes in the side in the um, graveyard. Dragon's Claw. Wow. Okay. It's just a little bit too slow right now. Manamorphos. Oh well, they they get to they get to gain life off their own uh, spells. That's that's a big game actually. So they're drawing cards. They're still looking at lethal next turn unless they play a removal spell or something. Simeon Spirit Guide. Do they have another anger? That would be brutal. Oh, Tormenting Voice discarding Fiery Temper. That's pretty good. That's gonna that's gonna buy them some time. They have zero cards in hand though, unfortunately. Okay, so they're madnessing it. That's going to buy them just about exactly one turn here. So they're going to hit Wild Nakata with it, sure. They go up to 8 health. Uh, we're still swinging 5, so... Uh, this does make it to where like Bolt is not lethal, because they'll gain a life in response. Sure. So they have 2 cards in hand. Uh, Flint of 4 would be lethal, but not a land. Land is not lethal. Alright, so... They're at three. The problem is that they're going to gain some life off this Dragon Claw. Uh, we we really needed to draw something at least decent there. The fact that we didn't is really unfortunate. Because they're going to be able to kind of cycle through some cards here, play some red spells, and gain some life. Faithless Looting is its pretty good. Discard another Faithless Looting on a Mountain. Cast Monastery Swift Spear. Go up to six. Yep. This, uh... This, um... Dragon's Claw is starting to bury us here. Uh, let's go ahead and sh uh, fetch just to get a land out of our deck. Um, and pass, and let's see what we get. What do we got? Good top deck. Flint Hoof Boar would be a good top deck. Still wouldn't kill him, though. Oh my gosh, just drawing nothing but lands. That's sad. Alright, well, we're gonna swing anyway. They're going to be able to like flashback Faithless Looting and try to find something good. They're really doing a ton of sifting. They've got Bolt for the for the experiment one. So we've got to regenerate it. Sure. 
and then we play a Scalding Tarn and just pass. So it looks like we're probably not going to win this. They've got too many chances to find something to deal with this. Um, they've got a bunch of Faithless looting that they get to flashback with this Dragon's Claw. Uh, even a Desperate Ritual is just, just fine. They're going to cast Faithless looting, but they just have to discard whatever they get. Seems like they've probably just kept the Desperate Ritual in hand. Swing a three at us. Nope, just leaving it back to block. Lightning Helix is a good draw. Lightning Helix is a decent draw. So let's go ahead and cast it. Uh, they're still gonna. Um, so we get to swing. We're now at 13, so. We'll just go ahead and play our fetch lands out. So they can cast Faithless Looting, flash it back. They have three fle uh, Faithless Looting available to flash back. So, like, they could easily find something really good. All they need to do is find, like, a Bedlam Reveler, and we're in big trouble. We just can't outrace this uh, Dragon's Claw. Uh, this is a scenario where um, our life goes on that's in the sideboard would be much better as a um, a core firewalker. Core firewalker looks much better in the face of uh, all this nonsense. And um, having a dragon's claw attached to a two-two body with protection from red, yeah, that seems like a pretty big game. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and fetch these two away just because we want to not ever draw lands ever again. So just remove them all out of our deck. Okay, uh, that's fine. We're gonna swing three. Put them at five. Go ahead after I cast my experiment one. What do you got for us? Arclight Phoenix hard casted. Sure. So we've got a Goblin Guide. That's a pretty good draw. It's going to make it to where our, this Arclight Phoenix is going to trade instead of actually um, block profitably. Swing 8 at you. Fiery Tempers on the top. That's pretty good. Sure. Put them at 1. <laughs> Alright, you're going to have to gain a lot of life. Flashback Faithless Looting. Discard Fiery Temper. Ugh, kill one of our creatures, go up to three. That still doesn't win it for him. Man, I would be surprised if we win off of this... Uh, off of this Dragon's Claw. There's Fiery Temper. Yep. Can kill one of our creatures, but that's not enough to... Not enough to save them. Playing Desperate Ritual? Okay, fair enough. Playing Faithless Looting? Sure. They uh, will get their Arclight Phoenix back to block. So that's still lethal, right? We still win. Okay. So we win! I can't believe it! <laughs> we just got very lucky there. Uh, they went through 20 cards and only saw one Arclight Phoenix, is that right? So, hey, as many times as there are three of them on the top 15, sometimes there, there are three of them on the bottom 15. So, hey, we got lucky there. Uh, we came out ahead of this uh, Mono Red Phoenix deck. And, um, hey, we're 2-0 and o in these queues. So, uh, we'll see how the final game of this queue goes. So, having fun.